So we say speaking in tongues is the initial sign of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. We can call being filled with the Spirit, we can call it uh, being baptized in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we, we established that this baptism is a baptism of power. Amen. Every believer needs to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every believer needs to experience the baptism of power. Praise God. The Holy Spirit comes into the new believer. Amen. For the new birth. Amen. And through the Holy Spirit's power and the word of God, we are born again. We are born anew. But then we need power. Amen. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible said that Jesus, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. Amen. And healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We, like Jesus, need, we need that baptism of the Holy Ghost but we also need the baptism of power. Amen. We have the, we received the Holy Ghost during new birth. But now we need power. And we receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Amen. And the initial evidence that the Spirit of God has come upon us is that we will speak with tongues. So, number one. The initial evidence, speaking in tongues, we speak in tongues because it is the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Number two, uh, it is a supernatural means by which God has provided for us to communicate with him. Speaking in tongues is a supernatural means of communicating with God. 1 Corinthians 14.2 says... For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not to men, but unto God. For no man understand him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. The Moffat translation says, For he who speaks in a tongue addresses God, not man. No one understands him. He is talking of divine secrets in the spirit. Amen. So speaking in tongues is very important for the believer because it is a supernatural means uh, God has provided for us to communicate with him. Amen. And understanding that, we understand that then that speaking in tongues is primarily a devotional gift. Okay, because it is a gift, a supernatural means that God has given us to communicate with him. So I can't use tongues to talk to you. Amen. And so when I talk to you, I want to, I'm going to use my, my natural language. Amen. But God has given us this supernatural means of communicating with him in the spirit through speaking in tongues. So it is primarily a devotional gift. It is a gift that we can use uh, and to, to pray and talk to God. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to get into the benefit of that gift and how that gift benefits us. Amen. Praise God. So speaking in tongues for the believer, tongues are given to him to use constantly. Constantly in his worship and devotion to God. There was somebody said that tongues is a, a, a fountain that should never dry up. It is a fountain that's always flowing, that must always flow, and it must never dry up. It is a supernatural means that God has given to us to communicate with him and something that we can exercise constantly. Amen. In fact, we should speak in tongues on a daily basis. At some point in time of the day, we should be speaking in tongues. Amen. If we have a devotional life or we have a prayer life and we take time, uh, we should be 
speaking in tongues because there are some powerful benefits and powerful blessings to speaking in tongues. Amen. So it is a supernatural means by which we, God has given to us to communicate with him. Amen. The Bible says, how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So that word mysteries is divine secrets. Amen. There are things about the plan and purposes of God for you that you don't know or and others don't know. There are some things in your destiny. There are some plans and purposes in your destiny that God has for you and you don't know about them and others don't know. But by praying in tongues, you can talk to God about these things. Amen. You can talk to God about these hidden things. Amen. And so, when we pray in tongues, we are praying by our spirit. Okay? We're praying by our spirit, and the Holy Spirit, he helps us in this. Amen? 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. Amen. But my understanding is unfruitful. So we are made up of spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit beings. We are more than just flesh and bones. We are spirit beings. We have a soul. Amen. That soulish realm deals with our mind, will, emotion, and intellect in that area of our being. But we have a body or we live in the body. But we are spirit beings. Amen. And, and God has given us a supernatural means by which we can communicate with him out of our spirit. Spirit to spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we can communicate with God out of our spirit in a way that we cannot communicate with him out of our minds. Come on now, somebody. And so, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, For if I pray in the Amplified, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps nobody. Amen. Praise God. So we're praying. When we pray in an unknown tongue, we are talking with God out of our spirit. My spirit is praying by the Holy Spirit within me. So the Holy Spirit is helping me to pray out those divine secrets. Because the Holy Spirit knows the plan of God for your life. He knows the purposes that he has for you. Amen. And so when we yield to the Holy Spirit to begin to allow the, that supernatural communication to be expressed, then the Holy Spirit joins in with us. And he began to release those secrets to Father God. We are able to begin to pray for things that we would never be able to pray for except but by the help of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can tap into some things. We have some access to some things that we would normally not have access to except by the help of the Holy Ghost. And through praying in other tongues, we can tap into those things. We can tap into those divine secrets, amen, those divine uh, purposes, those hidden things, amen. We can begin to pray out those things, amen, hallelujah, praise God, amen, hallelujah. So praying in tongues help us to take our relationship with God to a more supernatural level. Come on now, somebody. Anybody want to go higher? Hallelujah. Amen. Speaking in tongues will help you to go higher. Hallelujah. 
And so it helps us, speaking in tongues helps us to take our relationship with God to a more supernatural level. Praying in tongues help us to take our relationship with God on a higher level than our own understanding. Amen. You see, when we, without tongues, we are basically left with communicating with God out of our own minds, out of our own understandings. Amen. And, and that, that uh, 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 praying like that is good, and we need to, Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with my understanding. Amen. But we need to understand the, the benefit and the blessing of praying in other tongues. Amen. I believe that many times believers miss out on some things because they don't allow themselves to use the gift of praying in tongues. Amen. Amen. There is so much benefit, so much power, so much available to us. Amen. That if we just yield to the Spirit of God, amen, and yield to our spirit and allow uh, us to communicate with God in a supernatural level, we'll begin to see more. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So praying in tongues is a supernatural means God has provided for us to talk with him. I put this down. I wrote this down this morning. <laughs> praying in tongues help us to pray for more than we would be able to do in our own understanding. Praying in tongues help us to pray for more. How many want more? Praying for more means we are able to receive more from God. How many want to receive more from God? Praise God. So the Lord gave this to me uh, a year or so ago. He who prays much in the Holy Spirit get much help from the Holy Spirit. How many need more help? More help. Amen. Praying in tongues help us to rely on the Holy Spirit more. Because by praying in tongues, we are saying, Lord, I don't know everything. I, I need you. I need Holy Ghost. I need you. I need your help. I need your wisdom. I need your help and assistance. And I begin to pray in tongues and I'm getting the help from the Holy Spirit. He gets in there and he begins to help me to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And so praying in other tongues is a supernatural means God has given to us to communicate with him. Number three, praying in tongues are a supernatural means that God has given to us to magnify him. Amen. Tongues magnify God. Acts 10, 46 when Cornelius and his group were baptized in the Holy Ghost, amen, the Bible says in 1046 that it was no doubt that Peter and his group knew that Cornelius had received the Holy Ghost because it says they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we speak in tongues, we, we magnify God. Amen. That I looked up that word magnify. It means to enlarge. Anybody want to enlarge God? You see, God is already large enough, but sometimes we need to enlarge him a little bit. Come on, somebody. And you know one way we can enlarge him in our lives is to pray in tongues. When we begin to speak in tongues, we begin to uh, uh, speak in that supernatural language. Amen. God begins to be enlarged in us. To magnify God means to make him great. 
it means to show great. So praying in tongues magnifies God. And if God is magnified through speaking in tongues, I want to speak in tongues. <laughs> uh, anybody want to magnify God this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to magnify him. Hallelujah. When God is magnified, he gets the glory. He gets the praise. Psalms, David wrote in Psalms uh, 34, verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. So we can, ex we can magnify God by exalting his name, by giving praise to his name. Psalm 69, verse 30 says, I will praise the name of the Lord with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I magnify him a little bit? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. So tongues magnifies the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we want to magnify. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. Number four, speaking in tongues is a means of spiritual edification. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church again bringing emphasis to the private devotional aspect of speaking in tongues so according to the word I can pray and talk to God in tongues I can edify myself amen I can I can edify myself that word edify means to be a house builder. Amen. To be a house builder. Well, what house am I building up? The one on the inside. I, I'm, I'm building up something. When I speak in tongues, when I talk with God, I'm edifying myself. I'm building something. I'm constructing something in me. Amen. Come on now, somebody. It means to build up. To, to edify means to, prov to promote growth, okay? So when you pray in tongues, when you talk to God in tongues, you are promoting your growth. I like 1 Corinthians 14, 4 in the Amplified Classic. It says, he who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. Anybody in for a little home improvement? Anybody in need of a little home improvement? I know I can use a little home improvement. Amen. You, you see, you, and, and you, you know, and God has given you the means to, 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 to improve your home. Amen. And it won't cost you nothing. Amen. You don't have to get on the phone and try to find somebody. You got your own equipment. You got your own tools for home improvement. All you got to do is just begin to speak in other tongues. Amen. And you're starting to, to do some home improvement. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. He says, he who speaks with a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. Amen. And so... That word edified not only speaks to improving yourself or building up your spirit man. Amen. Because, again, we are spirit beings. You know, it, it, it's, it's bad because many believers don't see themselves beyond the flesh. They don't see themselves beyond the natural. But we are spirit beings. Amen. You, have, you are a spirit being and you have a soul and you live in a body. This body is your house. It is your home. Listen, and it don't matter what color your house is. God is not impressed with the color of your house. 
Amen. But he is concerned about the condition of your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okodo bashata. People are making a lot of uh, 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 noise and a lot of stink about the color of their house. But God is not concerned about the color of our house. Amen. God is concerned about the content of our spirit. God is concerned about the content of our character. It's a shame when believers can't get past the color of their skin. Come on now, somebody. We need to move beyond the color of our skin. Amen. And recognize that there is no black Christians in the body of Christ. There is no white Christians in the body of Christ. There is no red Christians in the body of Christ. As far as God can see, all he see is his children. All he see is spirit beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's a sad day when we can't worship with one another because of the color of our skin. Worship has nothing to do with the color of our skin. Amen. And you're not, we're not going to be able to change nothing anyway unless we pray. Amen. If we want to do something about the racism in our country, if we want to do something about the injustice in our country, let's get on our knees and call upon the God of heaven and he will cause us to make a difference in this life by prayer and the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. I know people that's supposed to be here, but don't want to come here because they don't see the right color here. Amen. We need to stop that. We need to stop that. We need to stop that. Because many people are being robbed of the destiny that God has for them because they can't get over the color of their skin. They can't get over their culture. They can't get over the traditions of men. They can't get over those things. And they rather stay in those things and stay stuck rather than stepping out in faith and doing what God says to do instead of caring what other people say to do. Caring about what God says. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I certainly didn't mean to go there this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us give praise and glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. To his name. He's worthy. He's a worthy father. And he's given us power. Hallelujah. And he's given us a means whereby we can use that power to benefit our lives. Speaking in tongues is a means of spiritual edification. Amen. Not only does it promote spiritual growth and development, but it emboldens you. It emboldens you. It, 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 it'll, it'll make you bold. Amen. You might be timid. You might be timid, but when the power of God begin to rise up with you, that timid timidity will go right out the window. Come on now, somebody. The word edification means embolden. It means to impart boldness or courage. Amen. And so we need to be bold today. We need to be bold today. We need to stand up in this culture and in this world in the power of the Holy Ghost. We need boldness. And speaking in tongues will embolden us to do what God says to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You take, you take time to pray in the Holy Ghost. Take time to give yourself to edification, spiritual edification. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. I saw the difference. Amen. There's many people in the church that are filled with the Holy Ghost, but don't use the Holy Ghost power to edify themselves. They don't speak in tongues except for special occasions or when a special move of the Spirit is going on. 
but they don't know that God gave them the gift of the Holy Ghost and speaking with tongues for their daily, daily devotion, for their daily edification, for their daily building up to promote spiritual strength and spiritual power in their lives. It makes a difference. Amen. When we pray in tongues. So number four, we speak in tongues as a meaning of spiritual edification. Hallelujah. I like the, the way the Passion Translation says it. The one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual progress. You see, we have a means right on the inside of us by which we can, we can progress in the things of God. We can grow in the things of God. We don't have to be in the same place next year where we are this year. Come on now. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be where I am uh, next year this time. I want to have made some advancements. Amen. And so speaking in tongues causes one to advance his own spiritual progress. The message translation says the one who prays using a private prayer language certainly gets a lot out of it. You get a lot out of speaking in tongues. A lot. Look at your neighbor and say, a lot. A lot. Amen. I'll make this last point and then we'll pray. And those of you who are here, we had three people last week were filled with the Holy Ghost right here. Amen. And if you're here today and you're not filled today, God will fill you. God will fill you. Amen. God will fill you. Today is your day. Amen. The Lord will baptize you in his spirit today. Five, praying in tongues stimulates faith. Praying in tongues will stimulate faith. Jude 120, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So praying in tongues don't give you faith, okay? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which is in Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing the word. But speaking in tongues will stimulate your faith. Praying in tongues build up your spirit man and stimulates your faith. Amen. The Amplified Version says in June, Jude one twenty, But you, beloved, build up yourselves on the foundation of your most holy faith continually progress rise like a edifice higher and higher praying in the Holy Ghost come on now somebody but you beloved build up yourselves on the foundation so when you're praying in tongues you're praying on a foundation of faith and it's called holy faith. It's called most holy faith. And if you know anything about faith, you know that faith pleases God. So you can imagine what most holy faith would do for God. No wonder this means of praying is the most powerful means of praying and the most effective means of praying because when you use this supernatural means of praying, you are actually using 
most holy faith. Most holy faith. In other words, there is nothing in your faith that will hinder your prayers. Because sometimes, without us realizing it, sometimes we might have some little biases in our faith. We might not even be aware of it. You know, there's just some things that God want to do we may not want him to do. God may want to do some things for somebody else we might not want him to do. But when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we bypass our biases. We bypass our own desires and what we want and what we think. And we tap into the supernatural and we begin to pray out God's perfect will in perfect faith. Woo! When you're praying in tongues, you're saying, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise God. And so we are, the Lord has blessed us in a tremendous way by providing for us this supernatural means of communication with him. Amen. Praise God. We have the potential to rise in the things of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, because we are spirit beings. We have the potential through praying in other tongues to rise higher and higher and higher. Amen. Unlimited access to Almighty God, to His presence, to His plans, to His purposes. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we have that access through praying in tongues. Amen. Praise God. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to ask Pastor Elvie to pray, play something for us, and we're going to give time, give you time, because we want to pray for some people. Amen. Let's just wait on the Lord and wait in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to worship the Lord for a little bit. Hallelujah. We'll finish up next week. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. What a mighty God you are. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Yes. Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us. You are in us and you are with us. You're here in this sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just stand together. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Let's get focused on the Lord. Amen. Somebody may have come in here today. Maybe you've been praying for the Holy Spirit, for God to fill you, and, and, and you haven't uh, experienced that baptism. I believe today the Lord will fill you today. Amen. Amen. God wants to fill you. God wants to fill you. God wants to take your relationship with him to another level, to another dimension. Amen. We are spirit beings, and we have a right to communicate to our Father spirit to spirit. Spirit to spirit. Spirit to spirit. Come on, lift your hands. Let's worship him. Let's just worship him. Let's just focus on him. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, let's worship him together. Let's worship him together. Let's worship him together. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. He wants to fill you today. 
He wants to fill you today. He wants to baptize you today. He wants to anoint you today. He wants to fill you with power. He wants to fill you with power. He wants to fill you with power. Will you receive power? Will you receive power? Will you receive the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're here today, and you said, you know what? Today, I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to receive power today. If that's you, I want you to just raise your hands. Just raise your hands. Matter of fact, just come on down. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to lay my hands on you. I'm going to lay my hands on you, and the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And, and you're going to speak in tongues this morning. You're going to speak in tongues this morning. God's going to fill you with his power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just come right on down. Let's not, let's not hesitate. Let's not wait. Amen. Let's just be, let's just dive in. Let's just jump in. Hallelujah. If you're not filled, God wants to fill you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there one to say, today is my day. Today is my day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. It's so easy. It's so easy to be filled. It's so easy to be filled. You know why? Because it's, it's God. It's God that does the filling. It's God that does the filling. We, we just do the receiving. We just do the receiving. Amen. We just open our hearts and do the receiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Perhaps if you, you feel a little bit uh, uh, uneasy about coming down, praise God. I believe the Lord will fill you right there in your seat. Right there in your seat. You know, God does everything he can to get us to the position of receiving. Amen. So if you're here today, amen, and you want to be filled, just lift your hands up right now, right where you are. Just lift your hands up right where you are. Praise God. Praise God. Are your hands lifted? Oh, come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times people miss out, but we got to get the victory over fear. We got to get the victory over fear. Amen. Ain't nothing to be afraid of. Praise God. We bind the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over fear. We, we, we take authority over fear in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Is there somebody else? Since my sister was bold enough, maybe somebody else will be bold enough. Praise God. God's going to fill you today, my sister. Amen. If you want a, just a fresh baptism, or you want a fresh uh, outpouring, just come on and, and stand with us today. My sister Dottie got filled last week. Amen. And here she, she, she said, I want some more. I want some, I want a fresh dose.